We want to begin with uh, Brother Dennis Arins. Please, um, can you come up to give us your testimony? Watchman, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name's uh, Brother Dennis Nemeka Arinze, formerly from Lawanson Parish, but now Ejigbo Parish. Praise the Lord. <laughs> My testimony goes like this. Since 2011, I felt sick. And uh, I traveled home and uh, I was told by the doctors the type of problems and that I'm going to go under, go on operation. And I agreed with them, but they told me that the operation is 50-50, that I must sign. I was there with my wife. Then I said, okay, no problem, I signed. I told them, no problem. I believe them, I believe because I know I'm a child of God. Then I went for the operation on 2011. After the operation, they made a terrible mistake that would have taken my life. Then after that, I went for the second operation. On the second operation, when I was the child, I was at my, uh, in my house. My phone rang. And I picked it. Behold, it was Johnny, the servant of God's son. He said, my daddy wants to talk to you. I was very happy. I know if, you, if it's you, you'll be happy too. <laughs> then I heard the, the voice of the servant of God in the phone. The only thing I, I hold hand, after he prayed, he said, I should not die. I believed it. After the second operation, I came back to Lagos. Behold, the problem is still there. I went for the third one. On the third operation, Servant of God now called me on his own or by himself. I picked the phone because I never knew that servant of God will call my phone. So when I picked the phone, I said, who is that? He said, servant of God. I said, which servant of God? But before I could know it, I heard his voice. I nearly fell down on my bed. I said, sir, I'm sorry. He now began to ask me how, how, how am I feeling? I told him everything. He now prayed for me again. I came back to Lagos. I went for the fourth operation. So after the fourth operation, in fact, all this thing I'm saying, it is just like a story, but it is a serious case. All of them is major oppression. So after the oppre fourth, fourth one, behold, the problem is still there. Then on February this year, I went for the fifth operation. I was on the sick bed at the Nam Jazukiwe Church today. We the Tassian pastor of Enugu and the Tassian pastor of Benin. They came to where I was in the hospital, and the nun said that this is, will be the last operation. Yeah. And after they had prayed, they gave me some money. When they were, at the nun called the Tassian pastor of Newe. They told him that there's a watchman, old watchman that is here. And the brethren continued coming to visit me. And they were praying. Then after that, on February, and before that operation, the fifth one, the doctors called me. They said this is the last opportunity they, that after this, they don't have anything to do. Because the first uh, professor that was handling my case now transferred me to another professor. The last professor now told me that after this one, there's nothing again they can do. I was laughing in my mind. But behold, on the theater, the devil wanted to put fear in me. At the time, my breath was seizing. I was telling the doctors, they said, what is happening? I said, I can't breathe well. They brought oxygen and all that. So after all said and done, after all said and done, I am here testifying to the brethren. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to stand here to tell you that that which servant of God has said that I should not die. I am here. Not only that I went to the hospital, I become a preacher in the hospital. 
every morning, every morning I wake everybody around five o'clock. After singing praises, I will minister to the people. And when I was ministering, there was a watchman, sister at Onicha. The brother was there, not believer. He called me, he said, please, go and uh, I should go and lead him to Christ. I went there, this young man, with one issue, I prayed for him. I told him the reason he must give his life to Christ, not knowing that this, this young man will later die. So after praying and telling him everything about God, later when I was discharged, when I was discharged, the people there, the hospital, they said I should not go. That I should remain with them. I stayed there two days in the hospital after I've been discharged. So I now beg them that I should go. My, my place is very close. I will be coming to minister to them. Then I went. So what I'm trying to say is that God has totally healed me. I don't have any... Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Bible says that um, by the same uh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For the Lord is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. We thank God for God's intervention, not allowing our brother to die, because his ministry here on earth and in the watchman has not finished. So we bless God. We want to hear the second testimony we want to hear from sister fortunate shukuka standing before you is sister fortunate shukuka from okota district i never began to give this testimony today but when the announcement came where i was seated it was as if there was you know fire on my bench I stood up and I went. I was the, almost the last person that went. But I am here today to thank God for what he has done in my life. This, um, this testimony I'm giving now began in the year 2007 when I had my second baby. I delivered normally, but after delivery, 12 midnight, problem began. In fact, I noticed I was bleeding, not only bleeding, I noticed I couldn't stand up again. I couldn't walk anymore. Nobody could decode what was wrong with me. Finally, I was referred to the general hospital. And when I got there, I was asked to, you know, go for uh, x-ray. I went, and it was discovered that my spinal cord was eating up, and I couldn't walk. Before I could go anywhere, somebody would help me. In fact, a door must come close by our door before I will now, you know, enter. So I was placed on physiotherapy. I went for the first week, the second week, the third week. I called my husband, I won't go again. He said, why? I told him that I am not convinced to be going there. So I continued believing God. As I was believing God, one of the days, they went for Sunday Light Fellowship because as I can't walk, I always stay in the house. When he went for Sunday Light Fellowship with the other members of the family, I was there crying. I said, God, that I am a chorister in your vineyard. Behold, I can rise up. I was crying. All of a sudden, it was a safe sleep took me off. As I, as I was in that, you know, half awake, half sleep, I heard a voice that said, release her. What has she done? That was an argument. What has she done? Release her. So when that voice came, I stood up from the bed. Because I will always lie, you know, facing up. I can't turn the other side except someone comes to help me. I was just facing like that. So I, managed, I stood up. When I stood up, I gently walked down from the bed. And I was, you know, walking a bit. My husband came and saw me seated in the parlor. So he asked me what happened. I said, miracle has taken place. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To cut the whole story short, 
the last, uh, as that issue happened, the miracle took place, you know the devil. But the whole thing, after some time, you look as if the thing is still there. The pain was so severe. In fact, if, if the pain comes on me, I'll be crying like a baby. I can't do anything. I can't rise up. I can't bend down. In fact, I can't lift up heavy things. This became a problem to me. So, when on the 5th of April this year, we came here for workers' meeting. As we were coming, because the pains at a point, I stopped complaining. I was bearing the pains alone. So, as we were coming for the workers' meeting, I told my husband on the way, I said, how I wish this workers' meeting will not hold today. I'll just go back and lie down and sleep. He asked me, what is it? I said, the usual pain. But behold and know. I came here that very day. I sat at the back. I was just asking myself, how, for how long will this thing stop? I can't rise up to, to pray. If I rise a little, I will sit just down. Just tell us what the Lord did. So that very day, when the servant of God mounted here, the, uh, the assistant pastor, he began to minister in prayers diversely. That day, I crowned that day the charismatic uh, uh, workers', workers meeting meet. day. So when I came here, he, he was preaching. At a point, he mentioned my case. He said that there is a woman there. You have a, spine, a broken spinal cord that today God has healed you. So immediately he said it. I rose up from my bed, from the chair. And when I rose up, I had sound on my bones. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I, I now said God has done it. I stood up, I bent down. I stood up again, I bent down. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, from that day till now, from that day till now, I haven't experienced the pain so good. Hallelujah! Amen. Our sister said, uh, release. She was released. She had a voice. Release her. What did she, did she do? I tell you, release will come from heaven above today again in Jesus' name. We want to hear another testimony. From Brother Ambrose Daniel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother, my name is uh, Brother Ambrose Daniel, a comedy from Agoda Parish. I come here to testify what our God, the God of Watchman, did in this last charismatic uh, week that we had. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, uh, one of my daughters was pregnant sometime in the month of August. And we went to the doctor and the doctor told me and my wife that she has incurable disease. And when I look at it, I don't know what to do. I explained it to my pastor, and he said that there is no problem, that God will take care of that. Well, it happened in the month of September. It occurred that we are going for operation for that baby, though we lost the baby. But we thank God for everything. Now, in the process, Another test was done, confirming that the lady still have it there. But the doctor advised me that after the operation, that I can take her to somewhere to confirm it. I said, okay, and the operation was done. And after the whole thing, we went on the 13th. Everybody that knew about our charismatic week knows that we started on the 14th. And it happened that on the 13th, being Monday, I took my daughter to that place. And the first uh, test was conducted. 
the one that they used to see immediately. He was confirmed that he's there, and uh, we went for the second one, which always lasts one week. On the very week that we had appointment, but the very day that that charismatic week started, because I told my daughter that she must attend all these uh, fellowships, though he's not a white man, but now he has come closer to me, I've decided I made her a white man, whether she like it or not. Because my pastor can say him on the very day I brought him to my pastor, brother to my pastor, told her that now the God of your father will save you. Amen. Amen. So on that very faithful day, we came for the charismatic week. The second day, Pastor Clem came here and he ministered. In the course of his prayer, he said that the devil has deposited something in somebody's body. But now, God is removing those things. Amen. Amen. Brethren, after that day, I still believe the Lord. On Thursday, while we close here, my daughter was going in Kekemarua, where she was. He said he had a voice that told her, I will have mercy on you. Not because of your righteousness. Not because that you know me. But because I want to show mercy unto you. I will remove this sickness from you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My daughter had it clear. To the extent that after that very day, the next morning, she ran to her, I mean, the person that is following her up, and told her what she has while returning from the charismatic week. Well, my brethren, on the 22nd, we went for the appointment. While we went to Yaba for the, uh, for the result of that very test, the first place that we got to collect it, I sent her to go there while I was on the other line on her behalf. Before you know it, she wasted a lot of time, and as my mother is, I went to her and said, why wasting time? I saw a young lady, very tall, wearing black trousers, asking her, are you the person that owns this paper? I said, yes. He said, but are you sure? I said, yes. He said, but there is no trace of this disease in your body. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise the Lord. The lady told her, look at your hormone, look at everything. He mentioned some things, and I don't want to know because she's not doctor. Simple. Then I asked her, why wasting time? Let us go. So I took her from that place, okay. and we went to Q, where the doctor will see her. Before you know it, she was called to enter inside. While I was, because I want to witness everything by myself, I was about to enter with her, the doctor stopped me. Then I pleaded, he said no. Then I went back. My brethren, before you know it, that place, everybody that goes there will come out with some papers. That paper will take the person to where they will begin to drug the person. But my daughter came out there without any paper, which I could not believe. I asked her, what is wrong? He said that doctor said that he should go. Because while she was coming, she was smiling. And I looked at her and said, I cannot believe this. Let me go and hear. Let me go and hear from the doctor. Then I knock on, I tap on the door, and I enter, I draw her with my left hand, and I enter there. The doctor say what? I say, sir, I don't understand what my daughter is saying. So he told me that he has examined her, and there is no, I say, no, doctor, I mean that, he say, look at the result. He say that everything is intact. He say, amen, brother. Hello, brother. We want to know the name of the disease. You have not told us the name of the disease. Okay, the name of the disease. The disease is HIV. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Just run up, brother. Amen. So. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Please let's uh, let's uh, let's hear him conclude. Let's hear him conclude. And uh, while we are discussing, the doctor told me that if I'm doubting it, 
that they don't give any person that does not have such a sickness the drugs. So there is no drug for my daughter. You say that they told her why she was pregnant. Unless I will wait until she gets pregnant again, if they will trace that. But for her, him, that you advise us that the gate that they can give us is January 2015. If we can come again for another test. But as for now, there is no trace of HIV. Hallelujah! Brother, I think it's there okay. is a testimony okay. of what happened that very day. There is this young lady that's by the side of my daughter. He was asking my daughter, so they have said that they don't have this problem. He said, yes. He said, are you sure that the doctor? He said, yes, my papa has gone to find out. He said, okay, what church do you go? My daughter told her that he's coming to watch man. And that is where the dad is watching. The lady said that he's living at the Mofuluku. How can she locate Watchman? I told her where she will meet Watchman at uh, Oshodi. That Oshodi will have Watchman there. So I want to tell you that that lady has become friend to my daughter. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And sisters, help me to thank this very God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Amen! Mercy, mercy came from the Lord. Mercy came from the Lord. Mercy will come again today. Amen! We want to hear from... Sister Ifoma Ndupu, we want to hear your testimony. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hey! Mm -mm -mm. Our Lord is good! Damn. Brethren, my name is Sister Ifoma Ndupu from Tolu Parish, Ajegule District. I'm here to testify the deliverance of God upon my life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It happened on the tenth on Friday before this charismatic week. After my dinner, so as I was sitting down having my rest to read my Bible and sleep, anointing fell upon me. The anointing was vibrating much. And what I said, I said, God, speak your servant listening. And the minister in my heart, he said, pick up your megaphone, go to evening cry. Mm. That was around 2 8. Mm. And immediately I prepared and went to, as I was going, my neighbor stopped me. He said, Sister, where are you going? I said, I'm going for evening cry. He said, Police is at the road there, catching people. As I said, I'm going the work of my father. So he's trying to stop me. I say no, I move. So on my way going, God directs me the junction that I will go. I went there and ministered. On my way coming back, I noticed that something, some object is moving in inside me. Wanted to seek if a way to come out. I just beat. I was saying, but it's not long I took uh, uh, this uh, uh, um, one medicine. That is not long. I leave it there. Saturday, I went for evening cry also. This, the same object was seeking where to find, come out, you know. The thing was disturbing me to come out. I keep quiet. On Tuesday evening, I noticed that my two leg is swelling up. Seriously. I said, what is this matter? On Wednesday morning, the thing was keep on swelling up. I don't know what to do. It's not everything I go to the Lord in prayer. I just leave it there. So the same Wednesday as I was going for charismatic week, in the evening time, I feel pressed, you know, like going to toilet. I rushed quickly and uh, went to service. I dropped my bag. So immediately I dropped my bag, I went to inside toilet. So as I was inside toilet, at a time I got a ministration. Get up. I rise up like this. I look my back inside the toilet. I see 
what they could. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I saw the word echo, life, fear came upon me. I said, what is this? I dropped down. I looked at this thing. I look, look, I don't know what to say. I quickly went to go and carry a stick. I hit it. It fell down inside the toilet properly. And in fact, I can't kill it because the word echo even was big. So I just carry water and pour. He went inside. And I stood there for some time. After I went inside the church. So as I went inside the church, I was so weak. So weak. So I keep on telling God, give me strength. So at a time, as the prayer went to start, just strength come upon me. And I get up. Immediately I close my eye to pray. A woman appeared in my front, kneeling down. Raised his two hands up. Kind of forgive, him, forgive me. So I opened my eyes like this. It was all trans. Brethren, this is the doing of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory. Roska prana aya. No, no. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Open your mouth uh, in a moment and bless God for what he has done. Hallelujah. My name is Sister Regina Chukwe from Ijesha Parish. Short, when I remember what God did for me, short, I, I don't know where to start. Praise the Lord. Seven years ago, I gave back to my, my fourth child. So, um, last year, September, I found myself, I gave back to a child in a dream. I woke up, I said, ah, what's the meaning of this? So, before I know it, I found myself, I, I know I was pregnant this year, that last year was the end of the year. So the thing, the thing disturbed me somehow, but I, I still, there is nothing I can do about it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So before you know it, I was very strong doing my normal business, you know. Before you know it, my, when the time was, during the Easter retreat, I was at the back then. One of, one, bro, one of the brothers were, uh, was praying for the youth uh, uh, in, in that youth class there. He said all the children teachers should come for prayers. So I, I went there for the prayers. I, I joined them. So he said somebody is here. The person is pregnant. That, that somebody has vowed that you never get back to that baby. That the person used mortar and tied the baby and sat on it that I will never get back to that baby. So I, I was surprised. I said, ah, who is the person who must have been there do this kind of thing? I said, well, you are not my God. I have been having other ones without problem. This one, I must have it. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. And meanwhile, I'm a children teacher. Praise the Lord. So this thing, I, 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 someone, I took courage and went back to my seat. So before you know it, my, my sister in law I dreamed. I, she called my husband as she was in a dream and saw that I couldn't, I didn't make this baby, that I died in the process of having this baby. Immediately she woke up, her, one of her sister called again immediately at that time that, hey, she, that she was in a dream that she saw a lady that they were burying a lady in their family, but they did not show her the face of the uh, uh, woman. Uh, the, uh, that my sister-in-law, she was afraid. She called my husband and told her, they, they didn't tell me, but I know there is danger. Praise the Lord. But I believe God that I must have that baby. So uh, one of my friends, again, uh, she, she's not a watchman. She called me. She told me that several, three good times that uh, she saw a grave. 
So that she, she's not to uh, sleep in her bed. They gave her a pair and I, I will stand there. The other day she saw me stand, lying there like this. They used white clothes and covered me. I, 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 but she refused that. I will not have be the one. Praise the Lord. So when the, the mountains uh, reached, that day, on the uh, second of, that day was charismatic uh, on, on Monday, being first of, um, second of June, the label started. I called mommy. She said I should start coming. It was in the night. So I went. But then this thing, uh, since I've been having my issues, I have four, four kids before this one. I've never experienced this type of labor before. I don't, I don't know that I'll be alive today, but I really thank God that I'm standing here to give this testimony. Praise the Lord. So this labor started. The thing wasn't coming down. It was, the thing, all these places were empty, but the, this place was full. I don't know. This is labor. See, that day went. No way. The next day, mommy came, prayed for me, and told me that. They put this process, I, I never passed through it before. They put something inside me and asked me to be walking about. And told me that when the thing fall out, which means the head of the baby has come down. So I, I came down and started walking up and down. At a point, I remember who I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say, God, remember. From 1989, when I was a youth, I started uh, teaching the children because I joined this movement when I was 9 years to 10 years old. So I joined this movement when I was 15 years old. Even if I want to die, it will never be a child's burden. And I took care of children. I, I, I do teach the baby class, not the uh, big ones. Those baby class, if you are there, bread them, it's not easy to teach them. You will clean, change their pampas, you give them food, you keep kakata, you vomit, everything. I say, God, remember, Tell when, I, when I was pregnant, and I want to eat, they will hit on my tummy anywhere they like. They will beat me to draw my attention that they want to ease themselves. And I suffer a lot in their hand. They will match me if you see my leg. You will pity me. But I took care of them with all my good mind. With all my, and they love me and I love them. So, therefore, if I want to die, it will never be in child's body. Therefore, you must do something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say, God, you must pay me with my uh, deeds. You say that you pay everybody according to his or her deeds. Yes. You pay me according to my deeds towards children. Even if I want to die, allow me to deliver this baby. At the end, I can die. Praise the Lord. So, before you know it, within 10 minutes, that thing they refused to come down, started... I started having contraction. That I have never had it in that way before. Praise Amen. the Lord. When I was telling God, I'm dying. In short, this thing was much. I can't see again. All my headache from nowhere just cover my face, cover my way. I can't even see where to put leg, not to talk of go, moving. So the doctor said, I should, they should leave me. That is contraction. That the thing is really drawing the, because the rope tied this baby all everywhere. The rope tied her. No, before you know it, everything. I told them that I'm tired. I want to climb up. They said I should climb up. No way to climb up. I don't see leg to climb up. Before I know it, I gave myself a bit and went up. Before I know it, I stood small. The thing just fell out. Praise the Lord. <laughs> when that fell down, I thought it has finished. But yet, at the end of everything, to cut this whole story, uh, story short, I delivered that baby sand in the afternoon like this. I was... If you see that my baby, eh, you would like to see... In short, I, 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 I'm very happy that God delivered me. It's like they pour me cold water that I've never experienced in my life before. So I want you people to follow me and join this God. And praise this very almighty God. Hallelujah! <laughs> praise the Lord. So that my baby is at home. In case of some people that would like to see her, she's at home with my Amen. mom. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah! Bible says uh, when the Lord uh, turned uh, the captivity of uh, Zion, we were like them that dream, and our mouths uh, were filled with uh, laughter. The mouth of our sister is filled with laughter. The Lord will fill your mouth uh, today with laughter. In the name of Jesus, we want to hear from. Brother Nathaniel Emmanuel, and that we do for today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, my name is Nathaniel Emmanuel. I am from Barega Parish. I came to give this testimony because God that doeth wonders has done it again.
Amen. Amen. Brethren, you see, my first testimony is on the main thing that brought me into Watchman, which is bringing people to God. For sometimes it ceased, and I began to ask God, what have I done? But before the charismatic week, I went about talking to people. I remembered, I said, I'm owing my landlord. Let me go and see him, so I did not be too late. I got to that office, a lady that is there, here at uh, Sulere, said, Daddy, I missed you. Uh, since I have not seen you, I have been trying to see you because uh, I want to have the word of God. I want to know God. Brethren, I began to preach to her, telling her the way to know God. And then in the process, she began to weep. But today, I want to tell that when I called her after the charismatic week, she is now worshipping at Lawansin Parish. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then I was very happy that God has restored me back. Then the second testimony happened on Thursday. That was the doing of the Lord. I went to talk to a brother whom I've been following, talking to him for so long about Christ. Then suddenly, as we were talking, the son that is about 13 years old ran into his office where we were talking and said, Daddy, my tummy is turning me. And Daddy said, What is wrong? Have you eaten? And was asking him a question. Brethren, just not quite ten, five minutes, the child fell down and gave up. <laughs> I laughed. So the father began to call, Pastor, Pastor, you are here. And he was shouting. And then before he knew it, he had drawn attention. People gathered, came up with onions, anointing oil, and every nonsense. So I was just waiting, watching at the boy. I got up, took my Bible, and went close. I said, Please, excuse me. And I began to pray. I remembered. That the vision of watchman, the number four, says that we are to heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, and then uh, deliver people from the hand of the devil, and then bring the power of God to bear. I began to pray. I talked to God diversely. And people there were saying, Oga, ele or a Bible, ele or a prayer. I said, leave him alone. And they were bring I said, if you thought the child, I'll get offended with you. I draw the child out of it, drop him on the ground. I begin to pray. So I asked the father, what is the name of this child? And the father told me in advance. Chidera. And Chidera happened to be the name of my son. I began to call. I said, God, because I'm here, I know that you have made me a minister unto yourself. This child will never die. I began to say, I said, the God that did it for my father, the God that did it for my Lord, Hannibal, who brought me into whom I, in laws I am, the God of Elijah, that day you told him that our death is not necessary. And because I've been anointed, this child must not die. Brother, I begin to pray. This child has thiefed. The, I now put my hand into his uh, mouth and begin to call his name, begin to press him. I prayed diversely until the boy sneezed. Amen. 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 So when the boy sneezed, I now carried the boy. Ask the father, give me the key. And then the key of his car. I took him to the car. People were saying, oh God, bring him. I just dropped him inside the car. Drove up. Went to the hospital. There I was still praying. Praying. And the boy now, when the boy finally opened his head, he said, Pastor, please don't allow doctors to touch me. Pray for me. Take me to church. Pray for me, Pastor. Don't allow them. They want to push me into grave. And I know that was an attack. I began to pray. I began to pray until they took his blood. He said, no. I said, no, don't worry. I am here. They, they took the boy's blood to test him. And behold, after testing him, there was nothing found. I want to tell you that the boy is now living. Praise the Lord. Saprakaya Mahaya and adoration for it. 